Welcome to Holly Jolly Christmas. This is our brand new um, Christmas project that is very fun. Oh my goodness, I love this piece. Look at the cut details um, on the box itself. And then we've got the end with words and it's just bright, it's colorful. The box can be used for your um, you know, silverware and cutlery. You can fill it with rolls and a, and a pretty napkin. You could fill it with treats. You could put Christmas cards in it. You could put anything you wanted, Christmas CDs and double rows. Um, just an excellent Christmas kind of whatnot box full of the festive spirit and I think you're going to enjoy the lesson. All right, we're going to get into all these little grooves and stuff and we're going to use um, our Italian sash brush, the small size. And the reason we want this brush is it's kind of long and the little bristles will kind of bend and kind of dig into the, the cut areas. We could spray, but meh, I don't really want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm on my nonstick craft mat. I'm just going to get on my paint here. And then I'm going to pounce at it at an angle this way all around. And then I'm going to change my angle and go at it this way. And for the most part, I get into most of the nooks and crannies. And then I just have a few to touch up on. So just change your angle. Pretty easy to do. And then you can just wipe to um, smooth out the texture. Okay, so now that we've made a little mess on our table, what we're just going to do, because it's non-stick, is we'll just give it a little squirt with some water. And it comes off without water, but it comes off a lot better with a little squirts of water. Okay, then we're going to use this little handy scraper that has rounded edges so we don't dig holes in our mat, and it just peels right off. And this works with hot glue, and you don't need water for hot glue, but hot glue, um, two-part epoxy, all kinds of things that you would think that would normally stick to things, this doesn't stick at all. And then you just wipe to clean it up, and you're ready to go again. And because we're going to dry brush these, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and roll on our coats of black. We'll probably do about two coats, because the base coats pretty nicely. And we'll roll them on so there's a little bit of um, a textured finish. Rolling always leaves just a little teeny bit of bumps, and that gives something for the dry brushing to kind of catch on to. And it gives a nice even coat. And we'll do one coat, flip over, do all the other sides. Be careful about getting too much stuff in these little grooves here. If you do happen to get a lot of stuff in the grooves, go ahead and just sand to remove if you need to loosen them. Right, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight his um, the red bits. And the reason we're going to start with the red is because you always want to start from the back of your project forward. So if I paint his hat and then, or if I painted his beard and then painted his hat, I'd have to shade around all the fluffy little hairs and furs, and so we don't want to do that. <coughs> Pardon me. So we'll go into Red Alert and Dragon Fruit, and we'll mix those. I'm just doing a little brush mix about 50-50. And then we'll dry rub off on the paper towel. And then we're going to find the high places, and so we'll highlight the high places a little bit more, the dragon fruit. So when you're brush mixing, if it's not showing on your, um, if it's not showing on your base coat, then you need to do something different. Sometimes, um, you know, you can have base coated two or three times, and maybe I only did once, and so there's variations that can happen. So adjust um, as you need to. Okay, so getting that, I'm just going to dry rub all the highlights. And I like to do the highlights first because um, then, um, then when you shade, it glazes over the edges of the highlights and it unifies everything. But when you highlight over a shadow, it, it just tends to look chalky. <coughs> Okay, then on a ribbon, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go a little bit more pink. Okay, we'll just highlight all the centers of all the bits of ribbon.
Okay, since this side's the same, what I'll do is I'll show you the next step right here. I'm going to go into just dragon fruit, and we're going to highlight with just dragon fruit, keeping that somewhat in from where the other color was, so that it's a highlight within a highlight. And you want the, the pieces of bow that are the highest, like this one is folded over that one, you want those to be the most highlighted. So make sure that you um, don't highlight everything the same amount. And now we'll go with dragon fruit, not wiping very much off, and kind of dry rubbing or dry brushing, where we leave just a little bit of texture. <clears throat> and you go shape following so that you get um, good, good lines, like you wouldn't want this line to be like across that bow. Okay, now we're going to go into Napa, and we're going to shade. Okay, the brush that I'm going to use is going to be the, um, the Short Bright number 12. These are incredibly good at getting little floats. You just control the amount of water, and you get a tremendously awesome float. And we'll keep turning our piece again and again so that we get a good a good angle on things. You want to be able to see exactly where your brush is and where the color is. It can be done without doing it that way, but it's not, not suggested. Okay, so where everything's go behind things, that's where our shading point is. This whole thing right here will get shaded. These dudes right here. Here. And you'll notice that I constantly um, load paint, but I'm not constantly loading water. And I honestly don't know how that works, because I was always taught that you have to have a ton of water to float, and this brush just seems to do exactly what it's supposed to without a whole bunch of upkeep. Okay, yeah, see how that's already taking on form? Perfect, and then I'll repeat over here on this side. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the hat. And so we'll just tuck that right in that corner and draw that out. Okay, and we'll take and oops, lower the glasses and we'll go and just get right underneath, nice and heavy on his coat. We're going to have all the um, hairs and furs coming over it, so that'll put nice contrast in there. Okay, and then we'll shade over the top. Down any corners that aren't pretty. Come up the back of his coat and then round out that corner. Okay, I think we'll just finish that off up there. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna go into dioxazine purple and we're going to deepen with a narrow float. Just do all the places that we did before. We're just going to do them um, just skinnier. into his coat. And now this time, um, on the ribbon, we don't have much choice than to go pretty much everywhere we went, but this time what we're going to do is we're just going to round out the dark corners with the purple. I don't want it everywhere. <clears throat> I don't want all shadows to be equal. So just in those low places. Okay, on his hat, we're going to go into this back far reaches right here. Steepen that. You don't want to pull it too far into the middle of the hat or you'll just end up with a big purple hat. and then we'll repeat on the other side. Okay, I'm going to use the fur brush that's just kind of a big open um, bristles. I'm going to get into the um, <clears throat> dragon fruit and I'm going to pounce out on my palette really hard. And I just want to get a little bit of fur texture on his coat. Oops, pounce evenly. I want it to look a little bit like it's got um, a velvety texture. Okay, now if you've gotten a little bit pink, take just the red alert and make a very washy paint out of it and just go and glaze over all the purples, all the pinks, all of everything. Just real thin and sheer with the wash of red alert and that will just red everything back up. We're going to go ahead and do the leaves backwards from what I said just a little while ago. We're going to dry brush, which means we're going to leave some streaks with festive green. And we're going to leave that center area alone. We're going to set the foundation for our shading. It's not really a base coat, but it's kind of kind of being kind of a heavy dry brush. It's just a little bit easier to control um, where you're putting the paint this way. Okay, now we'll go ahead and swap and go into shading. I'm going to shade with evergreen. So we're going to shade to close in the base. I'm 
I'm going to shade down the middle. And note that that's going to, and um, then we'll shade where things go behind things as well. And walk it out just a little bit. Don't leave it thin and chintzy. Oops. You want your floats for the veins to be nice and elegant and curved. Okay, to give our leaves just a little bit more pop, we're going to mix olive green and festive green. And just dry brush on either side. Okay, just to give them just a little bit more stops. And I think this package is going to have to be made green as well. Okay, and then we'll give a little sparkle on our leaves with a little bit of olive green only. All right, I'm going to mix some flesh tone in with my Red Alert and my Dragonfly mix. And I'm going to go find the highlights for my bow. They won't be everywhere. They're just going to be where things snake around. Make sure you make them graceful, shape following. Okay, and that just gives a little bit more light leading in. And I think, hmm, let's give just a little bit of that same color for Like a stippled highlight. And then maybe just a little bit more of the other. Oops. We don't want to make it fur, we just want to make it highlighted red. All right, I'm going to sketch on details with my um, Ghost Writer. And let's see which way my details go. Okay, so this guy's on top. And then this guy. So the first thing we want to do is we want to just get a highlight in place. So we're going to use Saffron, Yellow, and Dry Rub. Let's get some color on there and then get out of there and leave it alone for a minute and let it dry. I notice the saffron kind of wants to lift off a little bit. So we'll do it in two sheer layers. Okay, so just continue to reload and wipe off. Yeah, that's 
Let's get it nice and bright. And as you um, highlight, get more, more, more concentrated in the middle. Okay, now we're going to shade with um, Burnt Sienna. And we'll come over here and make sure you round your corners. So we're going to go into that corner, but then we're going to round our way back out so that we end up with good round lines. <clears throat> I'll shade the tops and the bottoms of the ones that are on top. Okay, and this dude I started over here earlier gets shaded on the bottom as well. It's just going to give him a nice form. Around that corner. Really an important skill to get. Because <clears throat> while the shadow can go that way, it's going to lift up and go with the form of the ball. To keep the shape. Okay, now that we put those jingle bells there and they're nice and bright, I feel like we're going to definitely need to put some yellow or something in the middle here. So I'll have to figure out what that means for me. And now we need to let this dry. Alright, we're going to go in with a little bit of black plum into our darkest areas. And we're going to just deepen the shading right where things V. just a little bit. Okay, same thing over here. take our round brush and I think we'll go saffron plus pop a little hole in the cocoa there saffron plus cocoa so it's not too bright and we'll make our jingle bell things And that gives them a little bit of that detail. And then right underneath the jingle bell things, we'll line, really kind of nice sharp line with our um, burnt sienna. Okay, so it would definitely have a little bit of shadow going on. And don't pick up your wet color while you're doing it or you're going to make a mess. Like I just did. And then we can go into saffron only and highlight
Okay, we're going to do the bell details with um, black plum. I'm just going to kind of loosely freehand. Arch them as you do them. And that is just that little bit of kiss of detail that we needed. All right, I've decided that I can deal with the green box. I think it carries the gold color around and the green color. So we're gonna go into evergreen and we're gonna shade that side of the box and then I'm gonna shade underneath the lid. And we'll go over there as well as soon as we get that dry. Just keep it out of the bow. <clears throat> then on the lid, we'll shade with black green. Same thing. And we can actually probably just shade this whole side since it's over on the dark side of the stuff. shade there and then underneath the ribbon and then the same thing we'll go backwards and we'll highlight edges and so we'll highlight this top edge where that just turns that corner and we'll highlight the bottom of the side of the green box with a mix of Hauser medium and um, olive green. Ooh, that's bright. Hello, let's see if we can make this work or not. Yeah, that's, that's fairly glowing, huh? Let's back off. Okay, just a little bit of, um, let's go festive green plus Hauser medium green. And we'll get the other side. There we go. The bow is going to be, um, I think I'm gonna have to give that one more base coat actually. Okay, so we're gonna highlight the gloves. They're based with Napa and we're gonna highlight with country red. a slightly damp um, brush here and I'm not sure it's gonna do the trick I might have to switch to a completely dry one one thing about the crescent brushes if you want them to do their the dry rubbing technique they have to be completely dry otherwise it lifts paint off as it deposits it yeah much better And I'll go into a little bit of the Red Alert and the Dragon Fruit. Just give it a little bit higher highlight. And then we'll shade Black Plum. Try to give this red just a little bit of a different personality than the other red. I don't want everybody to be the same color. And I may just have to get him just a little bit of highlight at the tip of his glove. So I'm going to go um, country red plus the dragon fruit. And just highlight his thumb and the tip of his glove. All right, we're gonna go into saffron, and maybe saffron plus honey brown. I don't think I want the bow to be screaming bright. And we're going to just highlight down the sides of the bow. 
just a dry rub, dry brush, sorry. Okay, we'll just go one more time with saffron and then just give it just a little bit more highlights in the high areas. Okay, it's almost self shading, I think. <clears throat> And we'll go with our Burnt Sienna. Our short, bright brush. Let's get those areas where things go behind each other shaded. the bows go behind each other. <clears throat> Santa's hand is going over the bow. We'll go into a little bit of black plum and just sink anything in that needs to be sunk. Just the little corners. Okay, and I think that will be good. All right, we're gonna take Shading Flush and shade Santa's face. Just gonna kinda go right over things. <coughs> Pardon me. Since we're going to put all this fur on there and stuff, we'll just go across his forehead and down on his nose. Let's get his little lip there. So do you see how we're attacking this? We got all of the fur back here done. Got his gloves done because this sits on top of that. And then this sits on top of that, and then this sits on top of that. Now this sits on this, and that sits on that, so it's going to be a little bit kind of like we'll have to jockey around. But for the most part, that's the rule. You just start with the back things and move your way forward. All right, we're going to take bleach sand, <clears throat> clear our throat, and we are going to sh highlight the center of Santa's face. Okay, that will just give him a nice little bright section right there. Alright, we're going to build some fur with some um, charcoal and we're going to pounce off on our palette really hard to open that little brush up. And we're just going to give him just a nice lovely furry I'm going to go all the way over to the edge and then what will happen then is that this will become a self-shading color. So next we'll go dirty brush into driftwood and we'll highlight the center area. Then we'll go into our white. Highlight 
data center area. Working backwards, we need to, to bring more of the metal highlight out and backwards again into charcoal. Okay, <clears throat> now wipe out my brush and I'll begin again on the other two areas. Just blend those two. And there, we're going to take a rake brush. <clears throat> Pardon me. And we're going to just bust out of some of these lines that we have. And that's going to allow us to not have those just really harsh lines at the end of where we base coated. <clears throat> really splay open, just really, really work at splaying open your rake brush. Draw that down from the mouth. And give it a nice elegant curl. And I think I'm fighting over here. I've got some kind of little folk art um, type thing going on because I'm not pulling with my angle. So make sure that you're watching the angle of your brush. Okay, we'll give him some whiskers in his mustache as well. Okay, we're going to use some thinned, um, what am I doing? Uh, charcoal gray. Just rock some curls back and forth. Some mustache fur. And some fur coming out the side of his hair. We'll deal with his uh, with his um, eyebrows in a minute. Okay, so now we'll repeat to strengthen that. We'll go into bleach sand. And we'll give him some mustache hairs. You might want to finish this mustache off with um, a round brush. Give him some fur, some beard. Notice how it's going on in little clumps, little curls sections. We can repeat. sure you're real thin.
can see where that got real bright, just a little tap with your finger. Take it back down again. Give them a little bit of hair escaping out over here. <clears throat> then we'll go backwards into the brown color, the charcoal gray. If you have too much water in your brush, just blot it off. Next to white. A lot. I think I have a million tons of water on my brush. some mustache and now we'll go into slightly thicker white and we'll just highlight the main front of his beard Or everywhere. And I think I'll finish that off with brown. Alright, I'm going to use um, charcoal and I'm going to shade under his hat where his hair is and under his moustache. And there's lip a little bit. his hair right over here. <clears throat> and the mustache goes on top of the hair, so we want to make sure to shade it's to indicate that. And I think that'll work. And then we use our Raphael number no. one, loaded with um, water and some bleach sand, I think. And then we'll just go into his mustache and we'll create a nice flowing mustache. Definitely have to have thinned paint or it will not work. So it's got to be like inky consistency. Okay, we'll go into white. Same deal. And then we can walk around in his beard and decide if there's any places where we want just a little bit more defined curl. Where we don't want everybody to end at the same kind of line. We 
give him his highlights and his lowlights here. And you could go backwards if you wanted to into the um, the charcoal color if you needed to. Do not be afraid to just kind of give yourself some layers with this. Let's give our mustache a little bit of an end right there with some white. kind of where the jazz happens. You build it all with the other colors and then you make it all awesome with the liner brush. A few of his hairs can come down over his shade line. Perfect. Okay, we're going to shade his, under his um, eyebrows with Shading Flush. Oh, we've already done that. Oh, I'm being silly. Okay, we'll shade next to his, where his cheeks are bent right there. And then let's go ahead and rouge his cheeks. Let's see if my brush is dry. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and Give him a pink cheek with a little bit. How about the red shading mix with the, um, and maybe just a touch of the bleached, the flesh tone. So flesh tone plus red, red alert and dragon fruit. And then we'll give his nose and his cheeks a bit of a red. And then we can shade on his lip with a little bit of the two <clears throat> reds together. And now let's go ahead and fill in his eyebrows. So what we'll do is we'll fill in his eyebrows with the charcoal. Now let's fill them in with the... Okay, so we've got our base color. Let's just have that kind of swoop out over. And just kind of thick and sludgy-like. Connect his line. We'll let that dry. to get the right angle. Okay, I based his eye in with just a little bit of white just to get that down in there. And now I'll pick up a little bit of the charcoal color and define his eyebrows. And then we'll go into the bleached sand. And give him some little rapscallion-y eyebrows. Change the arch so that the hairs kind of twine in and out of each other, and that way they're not all like just straight, stiff, limey things. Then we'll take the um, some lamp black, okay, and we'll give him. Let's take some lamp black with just a little bit of liquid in it because I'm not getting a very good flow. Don't want it runny, but I don't want it not runny either. OK, 
Okay, and he's got little puppy dog eyes. I don't mind that a bit. Okay, and then we'll go in with our round. Raphael, the, the number one is tremendously thin. Um, if you've ever wanted to do ultra thin lines, this is your guy, this is your brush. Okay, and let's give him just a little bit of corner stuff. And I feel like he needs a little bit more than that. But now I've added that, so I think I'll leave it. Let's give him a little teeny float with our blue mix. And actually, I don't think our blue mix is going to work very well, so I'm just going to do desert turquoise. Remember, when you want to float really tiny, you have to be really dry. And honestly, I don't know why, but I do know that it's a thing. And maybe we'll go a little bit brighter. So I'll blot my brush, I'll reload my paint real strong. So it's almost liney. Okay. I can take that. And then we'll go into white. We'll have him glancing this way. Perfect. All right, I've got my stencil ready to go and we're going to base the gold stuff with honey brown. And we're gonna use our crescent brushes to to stencil since it's very fine detail. Let's go ahead and stencil everything in the right colors. Okay, I've got my letters done and now I'm going to go into Honey Brown with the second piece overlay and do the Baroque decoration there. And I think what I'll do is I'll do an in-place shading and highlighting on this after I get it all based. Let's take a little peeksy. Okay, I'll have to do a little bit of patching. Patching would be way easier than doing this all by hand. Okay, now that the top is drying, we'll go into our saffron and dirty brush load and brighten up the tops. Okay, then I think we'll dirty brush into burnt sienna. I'll have to wipe out some of that and get the bottoms. I'll just redden that up just a little bit. And now we'll take a peek. Okay, how cool is that? Very, very cool. All right, now we'll take our little flat brush and we'll go into Evergreen. And we'll just shade 
around that detail with evergreen. show it off just a little bit more. Okay, so we are going to highlight the red words and we're going to use the mix of the dragon fruit, the red alert, and the flesh tone. You can go right through, and we're going to do it through the middle, go right through the stencil openings to kind of bridge them. Brighten them up just a little bit. And then we'll go in with saffron, if I can find any saffron that's awake. And I just muddied all the saffron. Let's get some fresh saffron. <clears throat> Let's get some fresh saffron all over my hand. Okay, so we'll go into saffron. And we'll just highlight these areas where it's more in the middle. And I think we can highlight just a little bit more coming off of the, the accents. Just scribble a little bit of that. I can put my stencil back over it as well. Just brighten that up just a little bit. Keep my fingers out of everything else. And then we'll give a highlight to the top of our green letters with a festive green plus a touch of the dude next to him, which is olive green. Yeah, if I can get any paints out. Yes, you can always tell the end of the project, right? You can't get into any of your paints. Again, I don't want this to be a big old messy kind of thing, so try to keep it controlled a little bit. Yeah, I like that, just a little bit brighter like that. Okay, now we've got my stencil in place. And I've got it all lined up with my, um, with the cutouts. And I'm just going to use khaki tan. Okay. And more khaki tan. <clears throat> so we'll go into more khaki tan. Take a little peek. Okay, I think we're going to have to go up to beached sand. This is just using a dome brush and a scumbling technique. We'll go into bleached sand. So my fingers don't stick. I like to prop it with the um, back end of my paintbrush so that things don't slide around. really like it when things are not done the same all the way around. Snowflake. Okay, let's take a little peek. 
Okay, so that's got it's got some snowflakey going on. Now let's spread some snowflake love around, and let's wipe this off really good, and just give some faint background snowflakes here and there. to bleach sand. And we'll get a couple of really bright snowflakes. to our other piece here and we'll see if we can't snowflake a little bit out right there just kind of choosing places where there's not a lot of traffic And then let's give ourselves a little bright couple of little guys. Let's see, I don't think we have, we, we don't have any room for bright little guys on this one. <clears throat> okay, I think we'll call that a moment actually, you know, I think. Let's go back up here and line up. To a little bit of white. Yeah, I think that'll be good. All right, we've got thinned bleach sand, and we're going to make some snow. snow I think than that. Okay. And we'll do the same on the back side here. Yeah. 